Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Greisler, can you talk to us a little bit about the second and third layer effects of price increases due to an increase in the minimum wage? Certainly. So when employers have choices of how to respond to these higher wage increases, one of the most natural ones is to raise prices. And so there are some industries where they will be able to raise their prices, grocery stores, restaurants, you know, the Heritage Foundation estimated that a $15 per hour minimum wage would increase prices at fast food restaurants by 38%. Um, but then there are also other industries that can't raise their prices. Childcare is one of those. It's highly regulated. There are very strict child to teacher ratios, square footage to child ratios, and there's really no room to increase, um, to reduce costs through labor. So they would have to strictly increase their prices. But we already know that childcare is extremely costly, even unaffordable to millions of families. And I've estimated that just raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour would increase the cost of childcare by 21% across the US. And as I said, 10 states would have 30% or larger increases. So we're talking about in some states, families would face an extra $6,000 per year for two children to attend childcare. And of course, this leads to them having to make family decisions. One worker might need to stay home. Somebody might need to make more so that they can pay for childcare, and then they're spending less time with their children. Um, so all of these things just kind of spiral out of control. And I think one other second order is that we're looking at the immediate job losses and thinking of them, you know, 1.4 million, 2.7 million, whatever it is. But you're talking about a lot of young workers who don't have an opportunity to get their foot in the door. And studies have shown that teens who are exposed to higher minimum wages have lower earnings in the future. And those who actually work and are employed in low wage jobs have higher earnings because there's so much value to that experience. And for some of them, it's the only way they get their foot in the door. As you pointed out, the CBO said that half of the people who lose their jobs are gonna give up looking for work in a few years from now. And that's not what we want for society. I mean, the American dream is not to come here and to live on government welfare benefits and to just be sedentary. People want to work and to produce things of value. I appreciate that. You know, the cost of a dollar in middle America is different than the cost of a dollar on the coasts. So how does creating a one-size-fits-all minimum wage impact states differently? Yeah, that's a great point, is that the minimum wage really should be a local wage, um, not even a state wage. I grew up in a very small town in western New York State, five minutes from Pennsylvania, where you can still buy a good home for $60,000. And so the cost of living just vary so much across the United States. And as I was talking to some business owners, um, you know, about their employees that are working there, some of them are very content earning in the 10 to 15 per dollar wage range. Um, because that is a decent living in some places, especially if you're in a two income household. And I just don't think that it is the role of lawmakers in DC to say that we've picked this one size that fits everybody. You know, we saw in Seattle, they're already a high cost area and they're better able to absorb these higher minimum wages. But even there, when they raised their minimum wage from 11 to $13 per hour, the studies showed that yes, the employment effects weren't huge. Um, they were slightly negative, but the biggest thing was there was a shift. And so the lower um, experienced workers had to go outside the city to find their jobs, whereas the companies just started hiring and keeping the more experienced workers, and it made it harder for entry-level workers to get their foot in the door. One of the most popular case studies on minimum wage came out of Seattle, Washington. Can you just describe the impact that the minimum wage had on those Seattle workers? Yes, yeah, so it did slightly benefit the wages of the workers who kept their jobs, and those were the more experienced workers. But then there were less experienced workers who were pushed outside of their jobs or who maybe had their hours cut and had to go outside of Seattle to find um, more income and more job availability. And I think that that is an important thing to look at is because when we're talking about on a national scale, that leaves nowhere else for these workers and these businesses to go. And we can look at websites like the Faces of 15 who document hundreds of small businesses who have been affected by rising wage increases. And a lot of them who have struggled to stay, keep their doors open have sometimes moved somewhere else. And we're cutting off that opportunity by saying that $15 works across the entire US and actually we're you know, advantaging those places who have already gotten to $15 per hour 
because they've already been there and it's they have higher cost of living, whereas it's going to be the lower cost of living areas who would be most devastated by this. Great. Thank you very much, Ms. Gresler. I yield back.